Hello, today's lesson we're going to be looking at data. More importantly, uh, the two main things we're looking at our learning intention is interpreting and comparing a range of data displays, including side by side column graphs for two categorical variables. And the main thing I'm looking at there is comparing graphs. All the other words are ah, just jargon. Uh, the next learning intention we have is interpreting secondary data presented in digital media and elsewhere. So the main thing we're looking at there is uh, what is secondary data uh, and um, digital media. So we're actually looking at the bias. So what, do, how do newspapers and how uh, um, news channels on the TV, how do they use information and use the information as a bias to show what they want it to show. First of all, let's quickly look at some examples of different graphs we could use. So we have our simple um, bar graph, which is one of the first graphs we learn, along with dot plots, which can often look like picture graphs. You can just replace the dots with little pictures. Um, and we also have our line graphs. So all these types of graphs are really great ways of showing um, information from a survey, such as in our bar graph, um, what someone could do is just ask their friends uh, what is your favorite cupcake um, or just to record on a piece of paper who's buying um, the, the cupcakes and they record them down in a table and or tally it and then put it in a bar graph as shown. Um, for today's lesson we're looking more at something that we call a two-way table which is what this one looks like and we're also looking at a side-by-side -side column graph. Great, so this is really important. This is more helpful for maybe not quite a survey, but more when you're gathering lots of information when there's lots of different variables. So as an example, if we're comparing um, two people who work in a shop and seeing how much money they made in each month, so we're looking at Sarah and Tina, uh, we can see what each person did in each month which means we can compare it really easily to see who did better because they could have just had more customers in March so it wouldn't be very fair to see that Sarah made $17 um, but then Tina made $12 in January um, that wouldn't make much sense to be very fair if we weren't comparing them both on the same month to see well when they had the same amount of customers we could see that Sarah made more money than Tina did in March Great. Uh, we also have down, as I said down here, we have our side-by-side -side column, and that's very similar to our bar graph, but it's more used for comparing two bits of information together and visually representing it. So instead of just thinking of my um, my 17 and my $13 amounts, I can visually see um, that Tina, who oh, sorry, Sarah, who's purple, has more just by very easily looking at it. Often how we use these kinds of graphs, um, we look at something called the y-axis, which is what we call is up and down. And normally you'll have the numbers. It doesn't always have to start from zero and go up to um, 20. It really has to depend on what your look, what, what what kind of numbers you have. So as an example, because this the the highest I've got in my graph is 19 and my lowest is 12. Um, it probably makes sense that my highest is about 19. So in here, our highest was 20. Um, and my lowest, I didn't really need to start at zero. I probably could have started at about $10 and it still would have made sense. I wouldn't want to go from zero to 100 because then it would be very zoomed out. We'll look at another example like that later. So let's go into some examples of some questions you might have um, in your maths books. Uh, sorry, and here's one more example of um, what we call a double line graph, which is just a line graph, but very similar to our double, our side-by-side -side column, where it's just showing two bits of information on the one. And I look at this the same. So if I want to see how much Tina made in February, I could just look at February and look up to my dot that's over here and then look across and see that that goes to 14. So I can see that she made $14, or she saved that, in February. Great, so now let's use an example. So in your maths work, you might have a question such as interpreting 
or comparing some information in a graph. So here I've got a bar graph, and if I'm using it on a computer, it's really helpful if I can zoom it in. If I've got it on a, as a worksheet or as a book, um, you just have to maybe squint your eyes and have a real good look. So if I was asked the question, how many major supporting facilities are there in Adelaide, I look at my graph and I can find Adelaide here, and then go up and see where the line is. Now it's really important to then uh, know what is each one of these lines representing. So I can see it goes from 0 to 20, to 40, to 60, to 80. So it's very important for me to work out what is it counting by. So I could just um, see, I, I could use my maths and just say, well, I can see there's 1, 2, 3, 4 between each one. So four divide, so 20 divided by 4 is 5. And know each line represents 5. I could do that. Or I could just um, do some guessing and just say, well, I feel like this looks like halfway, so that must be 10. That's halfway between 20 and 40, so that must be 30. So halfway between 10 and 0 is 5. So there's lots of different ways I do it. Um, but anyway, really important to work out what it's counting by. So I can see it's at 20 and then one extra notch. And as I said, I worked out it was counting by 5s, so now my answer is 25. The rest of the questions are very similar to that, so I won't go into it right now. Uh, another way, another type of question is when it's asking for difference. Now you were, might be aware that to find out difference, easiest way to do that often is subtracting. So it's saying uh, between Sydney and Hobart. So I saw that Sydney and Hobart, so I can see that Sydney is right here on our 60 mark. So I might write 60, take away, and then Hobart is under the 20, so I might just count by fives. 5, 10, 15, so it's at the 15 mark, so 60 take away 15, so here I'm going to have to regroup because 0 take away 5 I can't do, I'm cross out my 6, turn it to a 5, that brings over one of those 10s to my 1s um, column, and do 10 take away 5 is 5, 5 take away 1 is 4, the answer is 45, so I'd say the difference is 45 sport facilities, it's always important to write it as a full sentence in maths. Sorry for the messy handwriting. It's very similar to work out our side-by-side -side biograph. I'd work it out a very similar way. Um, here, again, it's really important to work out what it's counting by. So if I go in and I zoom it in, I can see that it's going from 50 to 100 to 150. So I could imagine in between them, um, I have to find the halfway between, between 150 and 100. So that would be at least how I'd work it out. So I know the answer's 25, so that means this little mark here would be 125. Um, the way how, yeah, I'd work it out is I just split the difference. So I can see here um, some of the marks aren't on something. So they, here, this line here in Australia, um, it's not quite halfway between this line and this line. So I might have to do some uh, guessing. So I would have to say that that's possibly about 110 there. Um, if you really need to, you can do little tiny lines to see if you can break it up. So as I said, if each line is an extra 25, uh, I could break it up into something like um, 5, and each mark represents um, 5 to get to 125. Anyway, so I'd solve this, these questions the same way as I did with um, up top. Now for our last bit, I'm going to talk to you about um, what is secondary data and how it's used in media. And the main word I'm using here is a word called bias, which just means we want to show people certain information that will make our point sound more important. Um, so a great example I found from a newspaper talking about um, average global temperature around the world uh, for the whole year. So in 1900, so this is a, a, over 119 years ago now, we see that the temperature at that point was about 15.3 degrees Celsius around the world. Um, we can see that over the next hundred and something years, and by the end of our graph, which looks like it's about 2015, um, it gets up to about, so if I'm going to write my little line here, um, it looks like it's about 16. Um, maybe almost 16.3 degrees Celsius. So you can see from the graph it, it goes up and up until it gets much higher. So it looks like the temperature has risen a lot. Um, 
this information is accurate and true. They haven't made up the statistics. Um, but you can see very clearly that the information is biased because you can actually see the exact same information, but with something changed. I wonder if you can tell what's changed. If you noticed, uh, the bottom of our graph starts at 15 degrees and the highest degree that's on the graph is 17 degrees. If we showed the information starting at zero degrees and ending at something like 35 degrees, well then if we see from our 15 degree mark, it's very hard to see that the temperature's risen much. It doesn't look very impressive, does it? So we can see that this newspaper used this um, to really push home that the temperature is rising. So we call that a bias to say, look at this information, how amazing this, we need to be really worried about global temperature. To be honest, I actually think we do need to be really careful about it because re rising by even one degree is a big problem. Um, but it is very interesting to see how we could have shown the graphs in these both these ways, which are both correct, but one way looks a lot more impressive, this one here, compared to um, our second graph where we start at 0 and 35 and we can see that there is a bit of a bias to show people information and make people believe something that actually, well, from this graph doesn't look like a huge big um, problem. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and all the best with interpreting and comparing your graphs. Bye for now.